actually cared about building vehicles that were fun to drive, they had this vehicle. What you're looking at is a 2004 Toyota Celica. Now the Celica is one of those names that have a lot of history for Toyota. I mean, the vehicle's name actually dates back all the way to 1970. Uh, this 2004 model that I have is actually a seventh generation. It's the last body style of the Celica that Toyota made before they replaced it in 2005 with the Scion TC. Now, um, this generation Celica actually first came out in 2000 and it was a va basically available in two distinctive trims. What I have here is a GT, this is the base model. The GTS was kind of the higher performance model. It had a higher revving engine, uh, it had a six-speed transmission, upgraded brakes, upgraded tires. Now, the Celica uh, basically had two different, um, I guess, I don't want to say generations, but they were two different uh, configurations. The, what you basically need to know is, in 1985, Toyota switched the Celica over to a, a front-wheel drive chassis. All the ones before it were a rear-wheel rear -wheel drive sports car. And, um, you know, this thing is very... Today, it just looks very aggressive. Uh, I mean, this 2004 model I have is pretty rare. It's got what's known as the action package. That has the front underbody spoilers, the side spoilers, that huge wing at the back. And this particular one also has the HID headlights. That was a new option for 2003. Uh, Toyota actually made pretty extensive updates to this generation Celica in 03, but other than that, um, they pretty much didn't change. What you're looking at are those 15-inch alloy wheels. They come standard on the GT. The GT surprisingly has rear drum brakes. The GTS is the one that came with uh, the uh, rear disc brakes. And you can see at the back, these refreshed tail lights, that huge wing, uh, and then the chrome-tipped exhaust. It's a pretty aggressive looking car, and it definitely drives like something, something that I'm not used to with Toyota. It's a very sporty feeling drive. Opening the door and looking at that interior, it really just takes you back in time. That steering wheel is basically right off of the old um, Toyota Corolla or maybe even the old Lexus IS. You can see this one does have a five-speed manual transmission. The other option was a four-speed automatic. Now, this car is incredibly low to the ground, so you basically fall into the vehicle and you can see in terms of your view of the road, this car basically feels like you're in the ground. It's got a very low dashboard. It's got very different sight lines than what most people are used to in today's modern cars. Here's the key for the vehicle. Um, don't expect to find push button start. It wasn't available in this car. Typical Toyota chime there, the orange illuminated gauges, they look nice. Digital a fuel gauge and um, temperature gauge. And then what of course what you're hearing is the Toyota's 1.8 liter 1ZZ four cylinder. You can see this particular example only has 55,000 miles on it, quite a rare find indeed. Now, shutting the door, the window is automatic down for the driver's side, but not automatic up. And I'm not sure why Toyota put this window switches here. I was kind of surprised. I didn't realize Toyota would do that. Now, in terms of the materials, this is a Celica and it's not really known for a nice interior. In fact, the old Celica before this generation was pretty, was known for being cramped and pretty expensive. And this one is pretty cramped as well, but the dashboard is all hard touch plastics. Um, the fit and finish is solid. Um, this is old Toyota, although some of the gaps I'm noticing are kind of, kind of, are kind of inconsistent. A pretty old radio head unit. You can see it's a uh, cable style. Um, for the recirc on and off, um, manual climate control, five-speed manual shifter. The door panels are also hard plastic as well, uh, although you do get a nice chrome door handle and then it's leather stitch right here where your elbows are going to rest. Now, the steering wheel, like I said before, it, surprisingly it's not leather wrapped, but it basically comes off of the old Corolla. You get you do get a bolstering extension. This is a hydraulic power steering uh, and it, it is pretty heavy. It gives you lots of feel. Now there is a little bit of storage compartment right there. Uh, don't expect to find nav. There's an actual cigarette tray with an ash, cigarette lighter with an ash tray in here. The glove compartment kind of cheaply falls. It's a pretty small size, but um, surprisingly there's cup holders here, but there's not really an armrest. This is hard plastic. You do have some storage here, but I wouldn't really consider that an armrest. It kind of just hurts your elbows to actually rest it there. Now the five-speed manual in this car is pretty refreshing. It has somewhat long throws, but um, very nice clunky feel through the gates. It gives you a lot of feel. It doesn't, it kind of reminds me sort of like a Honda transmission, but uh, I wish the shift throw was a little bit shorter. The clutch is also on the heavier side, but it's a very short travel. Overall, this interior is definitely not something that you could probably get comfortable in. You need to be short and you need to not mind, I guess, an interior that feels very low to the ground. Now looking at the back seat, the Celica is a hatchback and it only comes as a hatchback in this generation. And you can see it only seats two back here and getting back here is quite a challenge. There's not much space back here really. Your knees are pretty much up in the air. There is one map pocket here, no vents or anything here, but at least this one has the JBL premium sound system, but everything in here 
is all hard touch plastic. So basically just put people you don't like back here. Now opening up the cargo area, it's because the Celica is a hatchback, you actually get a good amount of space. Um, when you can fold the seats down, you can actually pile your stuff up. There is a nice little cargo cover here and a cargo net. You'll find your temporary spare tire underneath here, underneath all these floor mats underneath right there. So it's good that Toyota gives you that. Remember the Celica was replaced with the um, Scion TC, which is the same hatchback body style. Uh, there is no more coupe or convertible for this generation. So finally looking underneath this hood, you'll basically find the engine out of a Toyota Corolla. I believe it was the 9th generation Corolla. This is the 1.8 liter 1ZZ FE engine. Uh, it makes a little bit more power, 140 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. It does have Toyota's variable valve timing with intelligence, but it doesn't have direct injection. Um, the Celica is front-wheel drive paired with that 5-speed manual. Z expect fuel economy at 22 in the city and 30 highway or 23 in the city and 30 highway on regular gas. If you guys had the reg the rare GTS model, that basically had a higher output 1.8. It was co-developed with Yamaha, it made 180 horses, it ran on premium gas, it had a six speed, and the gas mileage was actually roughly the same 2130. Unfortunately, I don't have that, but let's take a look at how this drives. Now, Toyota hasn't built as a Celica in almost 10 years, and I gotta admit that it's been quite a long time since I actually drove a Celica, yet let alone drove one that is in this kind of condition. And I gotta say, it's pretty refreshing to drive this car. And immediately, the, one of the first things I'm noticing about this Celica is it really doesn't feel like a typical Toyota. This is basically when Toyota actually cared about building a fun to drive car. And this thing is surprisingly fun to drive. And um, the 1.8 liter four cylinder feels surprisingly peppy with only 140 horsepower on tap. It doesn't feel anything like the Corolla's kind of lazy engine in comparison, but then again, this thing weighs less than a Corolla. It weighs about 2,400 pounds and it's a pretty lightweight car. And you kind of feel that in the way it handles. The steering offers a lot of feedback and the car just changes directions really well. Uh, another thing that I'm noticing is this car doesn't have much sound deadening. It's pretty loud in here in terms of the engine, the road noise. Um, the exhaust note. While the engine itself is pretty pleasing to rev, it doesn't really make the most inspiring noises. I would be much more curious to drive the GTS model over this GT. Now, there isn't too much test data out available for this car anymore just because it's pretty old, but I probably would expect a 0-60 to 60 time of maybe just under 8 seconds, maybe 7.8. The GTS probably did it in under seven seconds in a 6.9. In terms of the competition, this car's main competitor back then was really the Acura RSX, and it makes me miss uh, vehicles like this. I wish car companies would bring back a sporty hot hatch like this, or a sporty coupe like this. I mean, the handling of this thing is just great. The steering gives you great feedback. The suspension stays pretty neutral. The one thing I'm just not noticing is the clutch has a pretty numb feel. You can't really feel when the, the clutch engages very well, and um, the ride is also pretty stiff in this thing. This is a surprisingly fun car, and it's a lot more fun to drive than a Scion TC, that's for sure. You know, the TC came in and replaced this car in 2005, and they put the Camry's 2.5 liter or 2.4 liter engine in. And I gotta say, this thing just, I like revving it out much more. The TC's, you know, bigger engine doesn't rev as freely as this engine. And um, I really hope Toyota brings back a sporty coupe like this, which technically I guess they have the FRS, but the powertrain is really more Subaru than Toyota. And, um, you know, the FRS is probably the, the, the big spiritual success of this car, although it is rear-wheel drive. But I, I believe Toyota is working on, you know, going back to their, front, their I guess, fun-to-drive routes. They are, they are planning another sports car to be a super replacement. And there probably will be rumors of, an, of a sports car that maybe slot below the FRS, maybe another front-wheel drive sports car like this.
this. I guess this car is not really much of a sports car. It is front wheel drive for you purists, but it's a sporty feeling car and I definitely um, like the way it feels. Uh, the one thing about it is just not very comfortable. It's pretty noisy. The gas mileage is not bad, but the ride's pretty stiff. And I think the cramped interior was probably the big issue. I mean, us Americans, we, we prefer something with a little bit more space, honestly. And again, the handling, the steering of this car, it's, it takes you back to a time when Toyota actually cared really about the steering feel of their uh, sporty vehicles. Not bad, I gotta say. I'm genuinely impressed with this car and it makes me wish that uh, more manufacturers would give us a uh, performance performance sport coupe like this, especially Acura. They really should bring back the, the RSX. So I guess that brings me to the conclusion of this review. Uh, back then, like I said, the RSX was basically this car's main competitor, and it's definitely something that competed well with it. Um, I mean, the Celica kind of became a somewhat of a slow seller um, toward the end of its life cycle, but in all honesty, I can see why they're pretty cramped interior. But if you guys are a fan of this car, and uh, you find one that happens to be in good shape like this, this one is available. And I gotta say, it's a fun little car. It's a blast to drive. If you happen to find a GTS model like this with the action package, I would jump on it, especially if you're one of the people who want to collect this kind of a car. But anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed my overview of this 2004 Toyota Celica. Uh, if you happen to find one like this, make sure you snatch it up. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all later. Whoa!